Hello there. Uh, so we're going to talk about events. And these are also known as messages. So an event is a user action or an operating system action that your program cares about. So I have a program here that I wrote in C Sharp using Visual Studio. And I have two buttons on here. Button 1 and button 2. So it, when I run this program and I click one of the buttons, that click is an event. Now, the way we write event-driven programs is we write our code to respond to events. So before, traditionally in a program, you might write in a non-GUI-based program. GUI standing, stands for Graphical User Interface. And what we might have done is in a non-GUI program is just written the code from beginning to end. There's really no interaction. You, you might ask for user input, and you might get that, but then your program just is planning all of that. In an event given pro in an event driven program, you don't guarantee what the user is going to do and in what order they're going to do it in. For example, the user could launch a program and immediately stop it. You have to write an event handler to basically take that into account. So this is done for you. So we'll talk a little bit about events. We'll look at the program, and then we're going to actually see this in action by using a program called Spy++ that comes with Visual Studio. So let's just talk about events again just for a moment. So what is it? Again, it's an event, uh, also known as a message. Any user interaction or operating system action that, that could be useful to a program. So some examples might be the user clicks the mouse, types on the keyboard, what you're going to find when we run Spy++ is there's hundreds of events that your program is constantly getting that you probably don't care anything about, so you don't handle. Um, there can be operating system notifications. For example, if the user chooses to close or shut down the op uh, shut down the operating system, that would send an event to all running programs saying, well, "I'm going to close you." and then it's up to the program to do whatever they may, might do. So some programs would automatically save whatever they were doing, for example. It just depends on how that was coded. So your program handles these messages or events. If you've written a GUI application in Visual Studio, this is handled for you. So you don't have to do anything special other than just write the event handling code. So the way it works is like this. There's a message that's generated. A uh, mouse click or a key, something is typed on the keyboard. That is sent to an operating system message queue for your application. So when your application starts, there's a queue that's created in the operating system for, for your program, and all the messages for your program go into that queue. And then there's a, there's a queue processor that then routes that over to your application, and then you get to do whatever you want with it. So this is kind of what I call a don't call us, we'll call you approach to programming. Um, so in a non-GUI program, you wrote code that ran from beginning to end. In an event-driven program, you write code that responds to the messages your program receives. So again, it goes through everything, and then your program has to determine the event handler code. Now, the event handler code in Visual Studio is very easy. All you do is double-click on the button and it will create the the click event for you now just to talk a little bit about what just happened when I did that Microsoft has looked at the different controls that people use and has said um, well this is the default event handler that someone would want if they just double click on this so if you double click on anything it's going to create a default event handler for it but they're picking what that is and if you want more control over that come over here in the lightning bolt and you see all the different events that this button could handle and then you can you can do the 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 code yourself here so on a click if you just double click on that it does the same thing but double you can double click on any of the events that are there um, so just double clicking on things in the designer isn't necessarily what you want to do sometimes that can create an event handler that you uh, you didn't intend to handle the events for. Okay, so let's look at Spy++ for just a minute. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. So Spy++ is this little utility program. What I'm going to do is go ahead and launch our application that we've written here with the two buttons. 
And so I'm going to move this a little out of the way. And here is our here's our here's our program right here. Actually, let me go ahead and close or just minimize Visual Studio so it's not confusing. Okay, so here's our program, and here's Spy Plus Plus. Now I want now what we're going to do is we're going to use a little Finder tool here, and what I'm going to do is have Spy Plus Plus log messages for this window. So what I'm going to do is drag the Finder tool up here, and it will it's now tied to that. So what will happen is anything that I do in this window you're going to see the messages stream through. So what you're actually seeing is this operating system message queue for your application. You're seeing what's actually being put in there. Okay, so watch what happens if I just drag the mouse across the window. I haven't pushed any buttons, but you'll notice all of these messages that are coming through. And let's look at some of these. Here's a mouse move event or message, and it tells um, the position of the mouse at that point in time. And if I hover over a button and press it, so let me do that again, and you'll see right there, uh, you'll see that the, the um, WML button down message was generated for you to handle. And if I close the window, You'll notice what it did. It went through here and it said, hey, the Windows, um, we're going to activate, destroy, close. So there's the all of the things that I just did. That's all of the traffic that went to your program. And then you can handle any of these. There's ways that you can handle any of these events that you want to. Okay? So Again, you're writing your program a little bit inside out from what you might be traditionally used to. Uh, you'll notice there's no real starting point to the program. I just write code to respond to events. It makes it kind of nice, but it makes it a little bit complicated because you can't depend on the user pressing button one and then pressing button two. You'd have to code around that. So hopefully this has been an introduction to, a, a good introduction to how you might use events and, and um, I'd experiment around with Spy++. It's kind of fun to look at the uh, actual messages that are being sent into your program. So I hope this helps you understand events and event-driven programming a little bit better.